Okay, hey, this is uh, Darren Martin, and uh, I'm a fairly novice artist, just a hobbyist, and um, I use Vue primarily for uh, my renders and what I create, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and start a Vue and uh, have us create a scene, just a really simple scene. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of uh, how it works and um, what I do to create the art that I create. Um, so what we'll do is, um, this is Vue. Um, it's a program. It's a very expensive program. <laughs> and it's used in professional CGI and it, it's used um, in movies and, and so forth and and uh, you can do really spectacular stuff with it but for today we're just gonna do a really simple scene just something um, so you can kinda get an idea of what it's all about and how it works and everything um, it's got a lot of tools a lot of toolbars here on the left side lots of functions also on the top, um, the you got your top view, front view, main camera, and side view. And then, um, so basically, when you create a new scene, you're basically they they plant you in the middle of a planet that has nothing on it. It's a barren planet, and uh, so you have 360 degrees of of uh, space to play in and so I think what we'll do here first is I think I'll create a hill a hillside and I'm going to do that by just creating a standard terrain over here on the left I did a standard terrain and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up and I like that uh, I like that terrain but what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to actually turn it so I have more of a side kind of side view of this terrain uh, like that and then I'm gonna double click on this terrain and I'm gonna increase the resolution of this terrain so it shows more detail and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK on that and you can see in our preview how much more detail it shows now over here on the right now instead of just a brown sandy kind of uh, texture on that terrain I think I'll make it a little green and um, with some maybe some rocks and things and and so forth and, uh, and then we'll add some fun stuff later so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the uh, representative texture ball here that represents the texture, the current texture of the terrain. And I am going to add an ecosystem and it gives me a warning there about are you sure you really want to do that well yes I am I'm sure and so I'm going to create that ecosystem and then now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add some ecosystem uh, objects some plants now what I think I want to start out with is and these plants are plants that some of the plants I've created 
in a different program called um, Plant Factory, um, and some uh, are come with you, uh, and some you can purchase actually from other artists that make uh, these plants and so forth. Uh, so I think this is going to be a kind of a flowery woodsy kind of scene maybe maybe an autumn kind of scene so I'm gonna add uh, this vibratum to the ecosystem and then I'm gonna go ahead and add another one I think I want to add I like this this other plant here as a some shrubbery some Nadina domestica and we always need grass so we'll take a look and see what kind of grass to a, what kind of grass I have in my collection I haven't got a lot of grass I've got this guy right there some dry brush and then I've got some objects that I've created um, with a different program called Rhino and um, they are not plants well they're pl they look like plants but they're not real plants in that you can't edit the plants when within the program um, so I'm going to add several different um, versions of grass to the scene so we have um, kind of a, a variation and some good um, diversity in the in the environment. I keep hitting plant and I need to go object. There we go. So with this there's a few different ways you can populate uh, the mountain now with these plants. You can tell it to do a dynamic population and then hit preview and view will go ahead and fill in the whole mountain with 14 percent each of each plant and you can change that ratio for each plant uh, but it'll automatically do that for you uh, and you'll see here on the preview what it's doing and I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK right now and just for kicks I'm gonna do a quick render just a preview quality render small render maybe 800 by 450 here and I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna render that just so we can see a little bigger picture of it so you can see the the mountain now it's covered in brush covered in those those autumn shrubs and the uh, grasses the different grasses and so forth and all those different colors really pop out and now this is just a preview uh, quality render and it's not even done yet it's at 88 percent um, so this is not super high quality yet but we do this just to get an idea of how it's going to look um, later on So that's that's our preview right there of our uh, our mountain. So I think you know some blossoms would really look nice in here. I'm gonna add I think a flower to this ecosystem, or maybe two different flowers, and so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna right click on this orb 
and edit material I'm going to go back to my ecosystem here and I'm going to add let's add some real plants uh, we don't want the really weird ones we want just some regular flowers uh, I think a primrose might be too small so let's just add maybe some uh, sow thistles to that those are nice and fast and then maybe let's add uh, a red flower and that's called just red flowers um, and now we can go ahead and hit preview and it's warning me about my memory um, so um, it does that because it doesn't know that the software doesn't know that I have 32 gigs of memory in my computer so I'm going to go ahead and hit yes and have it do it anyway um, because I know that my computer can handle it so as you can see over here on the right side it's 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 rendering kind of a preview for us so we can kind of tell what generally it's going to look like and that'll take just a minute there for it to to kind of finish and it's still just showing us not the very high quality but the very basic draft quality of the final picture right here um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to add some trees I think that would really enhance this image and um, so I'm going to go over here to trees I've got some plants and trees and things here so I'm going to go to trees and I'm going to choose I like a blossoming cherry tree so I'm going to click on that and it's going to plant that cherry tree just one tree in the scene but it's going to plant it just not really where I want it so I'm going to enlarge it and I'm going to bring it back and bring it over here and then over on the side view I'm going to bring this up above the terrain and then hit this key over here where it drop objects so it drops it down into the ground so it looks natural and then what I want to do is I actually want to want to edit this tree so I'm gonna edit object I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna edit object and you see as you can see uh, the uh, <clears throat> that's a cherry tree with its blossoms and what I want to do is kind of tweak the randomness of this so it doesn't look so uniform. And I think we'll up the width a little bit. So it's a little more bushy on top. And then I'm going to edit this material here. And I'm going to go into the material editor. I'm going to edit the function. And I'm going to go into the color projected color and I, I want to, what I want to do is I want to actually change this a little bit 
so I'm going to give it kind of some different a different texture is really what I want on this um, I want to I, I want to brighten the color um, of this so let's see what I can do here on the color let's unlock it and then we're gonna go to color map color output three color output and I want to change this yellow I think to more of a a bright pink and then I'm gonna attach highlights to color and I'm gonna go to highlights parametric down here edit this color I'm gonna make it pink of a light pink. Now I'm going to hit OK on that. Let's see how that turns out. That left my leaves kind of as they were, but the cherry blossom overall color is still kind of a green. So I'm going to change it here to and go ahead and make it really kind of pinkish because that's really how a cherry blossom looks and some are white as well and so we're gonna hit OK on that and you'll see it's changed that color to more of a pinkish and now I think we'll add another one we're going to add another cherry tree and enlarge it. Move it down here, I think right here. And for this one, I want to make this more of a white blossom. So we're going to edit the material of that. We're going to actually, uh, we're going to edit the object itself and the overall color, edit the color, and let's make it more white. And hit OK. And you can see on the right here now we've got a pink kind of blossoming cherry tree and a white blossom cherry tree. And something else you can do in these images is put something up close like other trees or other um, objects up close to the camera So you have a sense of depth. And you can see how I'm enlarging and, and kind of resizing this one here. And this is going to be close to the camera. And I'm not going to show the whole thing. I'm just going to show a very small part of it. Right like this. So we get a sense of that depth of field. And since it's kind of hiding that one in back there, I think I'll go back to that and move that over a little bit. And 
and we now will see our preview over here. And this preview is very rough. This is, you know, not at all uh, anywhere near done. Um, but this, again, this is just a very simple scene um, created in view. And um, the next step I think I'm going to do is create light and create some atmosphere for this. Uh, I'm going to move the sun. Uh, the sun's direction and I'm going to create some clouds and some really cool atmosphere so we get some like maybe a sunset with some rays of light coming through those trees so I'm going to go up here to atmosphere I'm gonna go to atmosphere I'm gonna load an atmosphere actually and I really like that I've got a selection of atmospheres that I can choose from uh, I like the sunsets because we can really play with color in the sunset. Uh, you'll see that really darkened it with the sun way back there and the sun is really low. The sun is indicated right here. I'm going to move the sun. Now I'm going to select the sunlight. And I'm going to move the sun something to like right there. And while that's previewing, I'm going to go up to Atmosphere and I'm going to go to Atmosphere Editor. Uh, and as far as the sun goes, uh, I think we're going to leave all the settings as they are as far as light goes. Uh, I like the settings as they are as well. I want to, I think, give it a little bit more ambient light so we can see more of the trees and the colors of the trees and then I think I'll go to clouds and I'm gonna add some feather some more feather to the clouds I'm going to up the detail amount of the clouds and then I'm going to go to uh, the sky fog and haze and I want to I want to up the aerial perspective a little bit what that'll do is create some haze in our image and uh, give it a little bit more realism. And then, as far as the quality, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up to two. And I'm gonna put God rays in here. God rays are the rays of light that come through the 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 beams of light that you'll see um, that you see in real life um, let's see what else do I want to do we're not going to worry about wind because we're not doing an animation um, the effects and rain and snow we're not doing that standard spectral this is a standard spectral it's not um, that which makes it look more like a painting uh, if we switch this to volumetric it will become much more dense the air the atmosphere 
will become much more dense and uh, you'll see those rays come through a lot better a lot a lot more I think I might take a look at the fog and haze again too and do a little bit more on the haze because that's just going to make the light uh, more visible in the air as it shines through And I really like that preview. I think that's going to look spectacular. So I'm going to hit OK on that. I'm going to save my work now. I should have saved it earlier, actually, because it's often it's better to to save early than later. So um, I'm going to save it in my main file here, my main folder and I'm gonna call this um, Forest Glow and down here for the title Forest Glow by Darren aka Dan 3D and we'll hit save <clears throat> and now uh, I'm gonna render it so I'm gonna go up here to render settings I'm gonna do a superior render I'm going to render that to the screen and I'm going to do it in a 16.9 uh, aspect ratio at 1920 by 1080. So most people can use this image as a desktop uh, background as a wallpaper. Um, and then I'm going to hit the render button here in a minute. But first I'm going to just hit OK and I'm going to let this preview kind of finish out here it's still still working on it there we go okay so I'm gonna hit render and the render time on this particular uh, scene will probably be about two hours but I won't make you watch it for two hours. I'll cut the film and uh, cut the video and, and uh, cut quick to it. So I'm just going to hit the render button up here and let it render. And then uh, we'll, we'll see what it looks like uh, at the end. And uh, there'll be some tweaking at the end, but not in an external program like Photoshop or anything like that. I'm a purist with Vue and I like to create everything that I do um, within Vue instead of um, fixing things later or you know making changes uh, later on with Photoshop or whatever. So I'll see you in just a second. And so here's the final render. Go ahead and save this render. 
and this forest glow. And I'll close that and we will take a look at the full size image. Set that as my background for my desktop so you can see the see the full image. There it is. And you see that was just a really simple quick uh, view scene and uh, pretty much anyone can do it just gotta do it and be creative and yeah so neato enjoy view and please um, go ahead and post your questions or comments thank you